have this life ever rising up we can drink of a peace from the ever flowing cup we have vision when we trust our hearts surrender to the dance and let the magic start we have spirit to live well and long bonds of humanity rooted deep and strong sorrow and anger fade and love will win when we open up and let the magic in. We have powers, we have feelings, we have learning, we have healing, we have imagination, and we have art. Surrender to the dance and let the magic start. We have love, the great mystery, that surrounds our fears and sets us free. For only love can mend the wounded heart. If only we will let the magic start. Nosotros todos un a fuerza do querer basta comenzar a paz renacerá en tal seremos si y mi alma moldeará la magia de este arte de vivir. We have love, the great mystery that surrounds our fears and sets us free. For only love can mend the wounded heart, if only we will let the magic start. Nosotros todos un aforzado querir, basta comenzar, a paz renacerá, en taos seremos sin. Everybody, la 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 Welcome, buenos dias. That was our prelude, Let the Magic Start, by our guest musician, Jim Scott. We are pleased to welcome him to our sanctuary. Jim has a long UU history. His songs are in our UU hymn books. He was co-chair of the UU Ministry for the Earth and helped create the Green Sanctuary Program. Jim played for years with the Paul Winter Consort and co-wrote the Missa Gaia Earth Mass, which he'll be performing this afternoon with the Halalisa Singers at the First Unitarian Church, 90 Main Street in Worcester. What time is that, Jim? It's at 4 p.m. Come bring on, Cabal. Your, bring all your friends. It's a great concert. It's called the Concert for the Earth and has the Missa Gaia as a feature yeah. part of it. Let us now settle into a spirit of worship with a moment of quiet. You are invited at this time to light a silent candle of joy or sorrow. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Worcester, a congregation of love, hope, and justice, inspiring people to take on the challenges of a changing world. My name is Diane Mann, and I am one of your worship associates this morning. We begin by acknowledging that in Worcester, Massachusetts, we work, live, learn, and worship on the seized ancestral homeland of the Nipmunk people who survive and remain active as the Nipmunk Nation. 
We offer a special welcome to you this morning who are new or visiting with us for the first time. You, we are delighted that you are here. We hope that you will join us in Fellowship Hall following the service for refreshments and conversation. If you have questions or desire more information about this service or any of the mysteries and programs of this congregation, please do not hesitate to ask. We invite you to fill out one of the cards found in the pews. These cards can be placed in the offering plate or given to one of the ushers or greeters this morning. For those of you joining us online this morning, we offer you a very special welcome. For safety purposes and so that we might come to know you better, as you are able, please place your name on your video feed. Please take a moment to sign one of the attendance clipboards as that are now being circulated. Though you are not obligated to sign, we appreciate your information and will use it only for church purposes. During the service, we offer an opportunity to share a brief personal joy or sorrow. If you would like yours to be read aloud by the minister, Please print it on an index card in the pew and drop it in the collection plate when it comes around. These cards will also be posted outside the minister's office to be shared with our friends at other services. For those online, you can place a joy or sorrow in the chat and we will, re and we will read and share it during this time in the service. In the foyer, our listening devices and large print service programs and hymnals for those who might find their assistance beneficial. Please see one of our ushers who will be pleased to assist you. I invite you now to turn your technology to worship mode. And finally, please note the announcements on the back of your program, the order of service this morning. There will be time for short verbal announcements following the postlude. We are so glad you are here and hope that this morning is an opportunity for rest, reflection, and rejuvenation. And now I turn the pulpit over to Jim. Thank you. Hope I can live up to that build up. Uh, if you'll handle the sacred matches while I speak some words, we'll light the chalice. Thanks. I feel a need to just say something this morning in this uh, world of wars all around us. Uh, we have the privilege, I guess, of this peace that we are gifted with to be among each other this morning in, uh, in a relative peace. Uh, we should know our history and I'm not going to name any names or blame any parties, but we know about war. We know where it comes from. We know that colonialism and racism and tribalism and uh, religious intolerance and so many more are, are, uh, are the roots of where war, violence, insurrection comes from. And we should know better. We have the tools to make peace. We have the, the wisdom to make a peace when we feel like it. But we're too tolerant of this world that lives by that colonialism, which is essentially taking stuff that doesn't belong to you. And that's, um, that's what we're happy with. We need to change that equation. Uh, it doesn't mean doing with less. It means inventing more, inventing a different way to be. And I love our eighth principle now. I love all, this, all our principles. And I even love that we have the democratic, uh, <clears throat> what's the word I want? Freedom <laughs> to, to decide that we don't want to have principles anymore. We're going to discuss it in another way. That's the way we work in the Unitarian Universalist Church. Uh, it's a democratic process, and we, we do argue sometimes, peacefully, I hope, but we discuss all of this stuff and try to come up with the way to live that we think is the way that will serve us. 
So I'm not going to say those other words I was going to say that was called fire of life. You can, I'll come another Sunday and do that. This earth has a fire in its heart. The fire of life on this cooling planet is now in all of us. We are that energy force burning, oxidizing green and blue and white when you see us from out in space, down here on the ground, fashioning from the earth, this whole spectrum of color providing this mysterious balance, mystical balance of peace and health and justice that we might call spirit. And I like this word spirit, as you'll see. Number 347 in your gray hymn book will uh, uh, <clears throat> provide you the wherewithal to sing along with this song. I will invite us to stand as willing and able, although I forgot to bring the strap for my guitar, so I'm going to stay sitting down, <laughs> if you don't mind. Gather the spirit, harvest the power, our separate fires will kindle. Sympathy gather in sympathy now and then gather in hope, compassion and strength gather to celebrate once again. do on Sundays a change for change collection it makes a little noise uh, as we drop change into what we would drop it into our kids going to do that this morning uh, we have kids ready to do that uh, okay and we'll play just a little bit of music while we uh and you can gesture and hold up a hand or something if you've got some change to drop in here
work, everybody. Oh, now I was hoping kids weren't going to leave quite yet because we have a song for a story and song for kids. <laughs> Did I do that wrong? We we're going to do the collection after the story and song. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm still figuring it out. Well, um, kids know how to make peace. If you want to just sit in front of you, it would be great to keep me company. Kids know how to make peace, we find, because we told them, right? Uh, we, I'm adults, we told, when we send them off to school, unarmed, hopefully, uh, to, and say, well, make friends right uh you make friends and you make more peace i went to nicaragua it's a little country in central america down there uh, we could say a lot about that but i won't this morning and um uh, i met a lot of kids there and um they spoke mostly spanish and i spoke mostly english but we gestured and smiled a lot and made friends made peace and this is this song has my first verse in Spanish in it. That was Portuguese I was singing before. Um, I wasn't just mispronouncing Spanish. Uh, but I wrote this song after meeting those kids. Well, I think I'd like to be your friend. I think that we could really have some fun. A real companion is so much better than pretend and games are better played by more than one so i think i'd like to be your friend you look sort of different from me and i guess that i was not too sure about you but if you like the way the different colored flowers go together well i guess that goes for people too and i'd like to be friends with you I'm kinda new in this school And I don't know a lot about your town I don't know all your language But I can play it cool This making new friends is not as bad as it sounds You know I'm kinda fun to have around I can be serious or I can be a clown I can make you want to giggle when you're wearing a frown. Well, it's too much trouble to be nasty, I've found. Porque quiero ser tu amigo, y tengo otros amigos que vas a conocer. Una vez que empecemos, no se sabe cuándo acabará, pero es maravilloso ver el circo lo crecer, que todos nuestros amigos sean amigos. La 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 La, 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 la. What did he say? Well, I think I'd like to be your friend. And there's other friends I'd like you to know. Once we start, there's no telling just where it all will end. But it's great to see the circle grow. We'll get all of our friends to be friends. We won't have to be afraid when we're friends. No, we won't want to fight when we're friends. And if kids can do it, well, maybe grown-ups can be friends. We'll get the whole world to be friends. La 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 so kids are going to go off and do something more interesting now and follow your leaders out to your classes, groups. Thanks for being here with us.
different tune here. You're welcome to stay too, not to uh, take away the class from well-behaved, mature kids are welcome to stay for the whole service. We hope we'll make it interesting. As we, uh, we celebrate today a peace on this earth and uh, this life support system, this Mother Earth. Uh, let's celebrate this more immediate life support system, the work of this church community, and that means take the offering. I'm going to go a little out of order in case you have this piece of paper that has the order of the service. I'm going to play a song while we do this, so you don't have to go like this. When like uh, I know how we are, so. As you're practicing detachment, I will sing you this song. If I can find it. Soaring beyond doubt over Earth's solemn gravity In noisy migration, still I'll, they long for their rest Sun kissed their wings as they carved the sky eternal Looking to the night as they sleep in their nest Voyagers heed signs written on the wide horizon from a third dimension, find the secrets they seek. Quest for nobility, sustenance, serenity, beckons to the brave as it comforts the meek. barriers and borderlines, a bond of all beings of the earth, land, and sea. Dreaming the world where each life is truly valued, rendering a justice that restores humanity. Spirit of the earth, spirit of the never-ending, from the third dimension, find the secrets they seek spirit moving always just beyond our understanding in the greater dance may we each play our part Thank you for your generosity this morning. And we all, most of us, if you don't know, um, um, I'll let you know that there are other ways to contribute as well online. And thank you for that. Nobody cares if somebody hollers in the middle of something spiritually and politically correct, do you? <laughs> yeah.
you know, I love playing concerts. I also like doing services because they let me talk, being a large white male. Um, I've written a lot of stories. I'm gonna, I've got a couple of stories for you this morning. This is called Relativity. Driving a bit too fast, I maneuver the curves on this concrete ribbon deep at the feet of solemn giants. Two hours past the Portland Bridge in a dreary Washington drizzle, I've made good time, as they say, in the company of huge Douglas fir bodies carted on tractor trailer hearses. The procession draws little obvious response from their stoic relatives lining I-5 for the occasion. Aside from my discomfort at being associated with this funeral, I do feel a distinct northward impetus passing the dead Trojan nuclear reactor, sedated would be more like it, that still sulks across the Columbia River in Oregon. The speed limit has dropped to a mere 55, but I'm following an aggressive sporty type and struggling to keep up in my larger minivan body. We are in more company than more. Traffic through the Olympia area brings a shock of sudden overpopulation. Musing about whether we belong here in the first place, I'm now distracted by the necessity to respond to the whims of so many other humans and their heavy armor. The lines are drawn, but survival of the fittest is more the rule. Some vague force ahead, though, is influencing our progress. I'm reminded of the Hindu story of following God up the hill. In single file, travelers can only see the back of the one directly in front. And only when the path curves do they get a glimpse of the divinity right in front of them. They can't see God for the human in the way. Over a hill and a sweeping curve to the right, I can see what has bunched us up. A state police cruiser going exactly 60. And ahead, no one. A great expanse of empty interstate. United only now in our disregard for a particular law, we are a seething army of bees, hardly swarming in anger or with any outward purpose for that matter. My interference runner has led us right into the hot politics of the honey drunk comb. For the moment, he's nowhere to be found, but then turns up between the Safeway truck and the pickup that shouts, owned and driven by an American, protected by Smith and Wesson. All we steel beasts wear our affiliations on our hindquarters and manage more congeniality than our bumpers might suggest. We coexist in a not so volatile as carbonated mix bubbling under the benign disinterest of our state appointed cork. He, I think it's a he, could hardly respond to us in a mass arrest. All right, everybody, pull over. Though we've broken the law to get up here, we are now relatively secure in our sheer numbers. Not that much more impersonal in those big rooms where we all wear name tags and make no eye contact. The goddess is alive, rolls right beside, don't blame me, I voted for Trump. More likely to be inflammatory locally, save a logger, shoot a spotted owl, shares the road, ignoring earth first. Just then, live by your hopes, not your fears, goes boiling up through the brew, only to redefine his specific gravity right under the cruiser's surface tension. Some of the leadership potential seem to be stricken with conscience at the top and choose to fade back into the anonymity of the depths. This headlong flight toward technological revolution of technological revolution toward oblivion monopolizes our concentration with only the frail dome lighted beacon of common sense and restraint holding back the flood for today all but fleeting glimpses of that freedom up ahead and natural beauty beside is obscured by our self-imposed steel environment. And once our competitive motivations wear off, we travel at exactly the same speed, appearing to each other to be sitting together in a theater at a boring show. Now this is the phenomenon Einstein warned us about. Or was it Heisenberg? Since we are always moving, 
we're incapable of fully appreciating our relativity to each other, much less our greater direction here, rolling down a ribbon on a shifting continent, on a spinning planet, tearing through space in an expanding universe that may be in fact somewhere folding in on itself. We should savor this moment. Suddenly, with lights flashing, the cruiser roars away, within seconds disappearing over the next hill, leaving us in shock to refocus on the ancient pro-choice and I vote Volvo, now expelling a good deal of steam and smoke from under the hood. No one stops to commiserate as the Volvo retires to the breakdown lane. Communion over, we're now back to our own personal trajectories, choosing between the military base exits and continuing north into Tacoma or west over the Narrows on galloping Gertie Bridge. Could we have behaved differently? And might we, in our magnetism, have influenced each other, unburdened by compassion for our fleeting community? Most of us are free again to dream of destination, though truth is this may be all that life really has to offer, the journey. A little chiropractic before we start. I'd like to revisit that song and sing you the, the last verse again. It's called From the Third Dimension. A wonderful minister, uh, John DeWolf Hurt, uh, not with us anymore, long since retired, I heard give um, a talk once that just really changed my life. He was speaking to peace activists he said, these peace marchers have seen the third dimension. And he went on to talk about, well, you know, we got three dimensions. We're not talking about fourth, fifth dimension and, you know, science fiction and, and so on. Three dimensions, that's what we got. And, um, but down here on the earth, you could think we only got two. You know, you go this way, that way, there's a wall over there. I can't see over that. I can't get, you know, like that. But when you get up in the air, as I was singing about as the migrating um, Canada geese uh, inspired this song, um, it's short, maybe I'll sing you the whole thing again. Uh, I was thinking about how they're seeing this third dimension. You know, when we get up in a plane, or as I remember John DeWolf Hurt said, now I went up in a hot air balloon, and, and, then, and I went to the Everglades where they had those glass bottom boats, and you could think you're just on the surface, but then you look down and see there's a whole other life. I've thought of that for a long time uh, and made other music about it as well, this third dimension that we might uh, try to hold on to for perspective. I knew enough not to call it wild geese. Soaring beyond doubt over Earth's solemn gravity in noisy migration, still they long for their rest. Sun kissed their wings as they carved the sky eternal, looking to the night when they'll sleep in their nest. Voyagers heed signs written on the wide horizon. From their third dimension, find the secrets they seek. Quest for nobility, sustenance, serenity, beckons to the brave as it comforts the meek. So may we see over barriers and borderlines a bond of all beings of the earth, land, and sea. Dreaming the world where each life is truly valued, rendering a justice that restores humanity. 
Spirit of the earth, spirit of the never ending, from the third dimension, find the secrets they seek. Spirit moving always, just beyond our understanding. In the greater dance, may we each play our part. I'm a veteran of my uncle's army and um, Sam. And uh, uh, I find I did not see combat. I learned about it. I learned how to kill people in basic training, but I, um, and I saw the inside of all of that mentality. And you know, there are some real peacemakers in the armed forces. There are people with the idea that um you know the philosophy that we need peace and so on unfortunately our police forces are are used usually to defend the rich against the poor rather than the other way around so it strikes me as we see wars on tv now here from our peaceful perspective uh every soldier who saw who has been in combat is wounded for the rest of his or her life carries that wound of war in this hour we can probably bet that a veteran in the united states will commit suicide about 22 a day more well i'll speak about that later at ron's memorial service there were two Rons remembered. The quiet activist, I admit, I only slightly knew, but was aware of going to schools through Veterans for Peace, reading his poetry, speaking personally, eloquently, to save even one young person from considering that choice of war as viable. Others eulogized a different, perhaps earlier, Vietnam veteran Ron, bitter, angry, hard to deal with. I'm sure all those elements still smoldered in the blues-loving dancer on his one good leg who made poetry of war. Was it good poetry or mediocre? It was the truth of his personal witness, giving credible voice in well-crafted phrases that touched on sorrow, pain, and madness. It was beyond critique. When the Calc House, the clergy and laity concerned house, closed down, Ron moved up the Mackenzie River and made his life in peaceful surroundings and with meditation spots. Though he then withdrew from the school activism, friends remembered him as a continued presence for peace, intervening in struggles wherever he was, which was mostly at the hot springs. He cleaned the pools and just hung out and was a good listener on any subject, hardly ever the war, or for that matter, anything approaching self-promotion. He died, at the time a year younger than I. The battle that raged in him wells up in me again. I never figured out if I deserved to have an opinion or feeling about it. There were all the promising boys in my school classes that I lost touch with after basic training. Did they die? How many? I never asked. In the tunnel vision of my own survival mechanism. In this day and age where most everyone throws out a politically correct thank you for your service to any uniformed soldier we see, it's happened to me, always to my surprise if for some reason I insert that I was in the army into a conversation. 
Back in that other time, the idea proliferated that wearing a uniform could bring accusations of baby killer from some jerk nearby. It was not the norm, as some would claim. That was invented later. It was, in fact, pretty well proven to be mostly fiction. It was more that the uniform made one invisible. Walking down an American street, I was invisible, as though no one knew exactly what to say to include this being in with the humanity we recognized. Though we were individuals who were for the war or against the war, that didn't affect our brotherhood, sisterhood. When you saw another uniform, you didn't see a stranger. We all knew we were surrounded by lies and corruption. Yet there was some vision of a just society and a sense of duty that bound us together, crazy as we might have thought we were from time to time. The morning paper might be filled with some politician's latest lie, but the policeman, fireman, soldier, teacher, postal worker still gets up and goes to work to make and maintain the world we believe in. And we hope it's not just in our imagination. I never left the country, and I actually got a six-month early discharge courtesy of Richard Nixon's Vietnamization of the war and troop reduction. The translation of that cynical public relations manipulation was that thousands of young men were coming back from their year abroad with a few months left in their two-year hitch. Combat had promoted them to a higher rank. Drug addiction promoted them not giving a damn about anything. The army had no jobs to give these malingerers, and they didn't want them around. I simply ran out the back door, the back door that they were being dumped from. Since then, I've been hesitant to take a position as one directly affected while my peers are steadily dying before their time. I have no doubt that the war brought an early end to Ron's life. More Vietnam vets have died of suicide in the years after the war than are on the wall. Ron didn't commit suicide. His heart broke and stopped. He'd appeared to be winning the battle with the lingering demons, finding a personal refuge that brought him greater peace. But his dentist brought to light another side. Ron's teeth had been progressively ground down to nothing. Ron and his dentist had made several applications to the VA. The disability came through just after he died. Mr. McNamara's book and apology didn't come soon enough for Ron either. It didn't come soon enough for me or others that I imagined. I pray it has come soon enough for someone and that there's still time for lives to change and time for healing. For those who died too soon, but not soon enough for that wall in Washington, I think there should be another wall. In my mind, if nowhere else, for I am healed a bit by remembering him. There was a certain way of saying back in that time, sorry about that, in the Vietnam War context, For any context from tragedy to minor disappointment, it summed up all the cynicism, rage, and denial into humor delivered with that expression, with flat expression, decoded into compassion beyond words. Between soldiers, it was an I've been there and amounted to hugs, tears, and 21 gun salute. We'll remember that you were a whole lot more than a Vietnam vet, Ron. Your life was rich, you touched many, and you left too soon. Sorry about that. Oh my goodness, so many papers. Time. 
I am waiting in the silence. I am waiting for the dawn. I am often found in reverence, though from many sources drawn. It is not mine to fight for justice, for it will not be won this day. I am peace and bring but mystery. I just sang the wrong words. It won't rhyme. And da 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 da. I cannot save the suffering from their anger and their pain. Only open doors of insight so the healing comes again. To the proud I am elusive, to the humble I am near. May the broken rise and look beyond the trappings of their fears. I am found among the seasons, autumn's death and spring's rebirth, as relentless their momentum as the turning of the earth. All are welcome in my presence, for only love can conquer hate. I am peace, and for the harvest I have planted and will So as I said, I've heard the path to peace includes being able to see things from another perspective. A picture on a flat sheet is two dimensional, height and width. Then we have though the illusions to represent other perspectives, depth, texture, connections, and that's the art of it. Of course, we find art entertaining, fascinating, to see how the illusions are achieved with what's called perspective. A child first draws a house in two dimensions, but then learns to put that third dimension, perhaps fading off into the background, uh, into a picture. Lauren Isley wrote a wonderful story of meeting a bird quite by mistake. She was secure in her fluid world of updrafts and down, though vision on this day was limited by fog and impending darkness. And suddenly she bumped into a ground feeder, a man, the author, high for him on a tower rooftop. She was not even near the bottom of her ocean of air. How shocked they both were when they, their nearly separate worlds collided. These elusive beings flying above us, coming to rest in our trees or our bird feeders, are subjects submissive, mostly out of the way. An immigrant family or homeless person might shock us as well when their world and ours suddenly collide. Our response as to a misguided bird is, you can appeal to our compassion, our generosity, but we'll get mad at you if you question our preeminence, our entitlement. 
we'll want to exterminate anything that threatens our preeminence. We don't need much perspective in the comfortable, addicting, two-dimensional world, getting flatter all the time, televisions, and now handheld, that wants to colonize us. All we have to do is keep buying beer, cars, poisons for the lawn, leaf blowers, even water packaged in plastic. And we'll hold up the great sacred economy. My mother turned over a pitchfork full of compost. It was not a solid floor, this earth, but a life was that we lived on top of, another world. My father sat with me on a hilltop in a camp near North Adams, and we watched the sun sink below the horizon. You, if you're still enough, you can see it move. You can feel the earth moving, backing away from that sun slowly, half as fast as the minute hand on the clock. There were lessons in that mystical perspective that the artist pursues and labors to illuminate. We've all had them. I collect them. Whenever you get a bunch of white people together, like in a UU church, unless those people are willing to work really hard, you create something exclusive. The natural tendency to be, be comfortable closes our eyes. For us folks with the privilege of education who have bought into language and verbal description like me, it's easy to believe that reality is nuts and bolts, logistics and practicalities, words. But what can explain the image of forgiveness, compassion, understanding, or grace in the face of abject poverty? We turn to philosophers and poets to invoke the extra perspective in visionary mythology. I do think we need to do a lot more. We need to be a lot more vigilant in this haven, the UU church, so we don't become an insulated, exclusive place where a few are too comfortable. But it's not a matter of sacrifice and deprivation if beauty and health are our real standard of living, we can create more of that, not less. The, culture, the cultural wealth of diversity and the support of healthy community. We should not forget as well that many of us come here for our own healing. I, for one, need that. But can we also talk about the healing of the world our behaviors are, our behavior is, our behaviors are uh, determined by three perspectives. As children, we quickly learn that something bad will happen if we do certain things, a negative motivation. The Ten Commandments say, don't do this, don't do that. Then the second dimension, positive motivation, that something good can come of it as a reward. Now, this is what Jesus said in his Sermon on, on the Mount that gives us his Beatitudes, which, by the way, we will sing this afternoon. I've set it to music. If you do this, you'll be blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the merciful. And blessed are the meek. And there's more. With that image of an, maybe an afterlife, I started in... My, my life in the Universalist Church of Norwell, Massachusetts, where I remember my dad saying as we left that tall, narrow church, I think hell had been brought up in the service. He said, you know, we Universalists don't believe in a hellfire that people would be sentenced to. That was a liberating thing to find out when I was a kid. And that is the gift we give to our children to question that bombardment of common knowledge that would tell us certain things. So there's the idea that our good works live on after us. 
Maybe that heaven is, uh, hey, we made a place for you in the presence of your enemies. Here we've set the table for you with all those people. And then there's the guy who says, what? I don't want to be there with those people. That would be hell. The third behavioral motivation, I guess it's obvious, is what is good for us, for all of us, is good for me. Or maybe it won't even be good for me, but my children will benefit. This is the third dimension, enlightenment, higher consciousness. When we see only those two dimensions, dualities, positions of victim and perpetrator, we can't get to the healing. And this is where art comes in. The amazing thing about art, or a song, or a play, is that it allows us to see someone else's perspective, even if we don't agree with it. When it's held up, we have to look and receive and honor. So here's my idea. Let's make an art of our lives, an art of our arguments. Beyond rules, a health, an energy, and a balance that can only be described in poetry. Let's aspire to that perspective, to the horizon and beyond. Peace is a rolling sea, so full of mystery. I feel its harmony in ebb and crest. Peace is a work of art that moves the open heart. Peace is a place to start and final rest. Harmony of harmony, I hear you sing to me. Let it wash over me, let it begin. Harmony of harmony, unfolding is a beacon bright that brings us inner sight a radiating light conquering fear peace is the wild wild birds call the painted leaves in fall peace is the health of all I feel it here. Harmony of harmony, I hear you sing to me. Let it wash over me, let it begin. Harmony of harmony, unfolding melody I am your instrument let peace begin with me peace is a field of grain neath sun and gentle rain 
in nature's glad refrain of love begun all being songs are sung as bells together rung peace speaks in every tongue all songs are one harmony of harmony i hear you sing to me let it wash over me let it begin harmony of harmony unfolding melody i am your instrument let peace begin with me So lots of talk. Where do we go from here? Well, this is where art comes in. Creativity is the alternative, the alternative to violence, to addiction, to separation, to alienation, to hopelessness. Stories with universal values that anyone can understand transport us to see the depth of all dimensions. So let our stories be not a flat epitaph on a grave, but a living compost heap that nurtures new life with the experience, the triumph, the tragedy of real lives. Not to be relegated to the junk heap or the museum, but to the fertile ground from which all hope can spring anew. My wish for you, as now we part, is for greater peace to fill your heart with dreams as vast as starry space. So hurt and anger know no place. May truth be shared and wounds be healed and joy for living be revealed through every fate and circumstance may hope lead weary steps to dance and may your life be as a song resounding with the dawn to sing awake the light then softly serenade the stars ever dancing circles in the night Now I was hoping you'd sing that chorus with me. It's written on that order of service. I'll sing a line, you sing it back. May your life be as a song. You try it. And may your life be as a song. Resounding with the dawn to sing awake the light try that resounding with the dawn to sing awake the light then softly serenade the stars then softly serenade the stars ever dancing circles in the night ever dancing circles in the night. So it turns out to be a four-part round Ha ha ha, but I know we can do it in at least two parts. Someone can give us that second part. You know who you are. If you're unsure, stick with me. 
And may your life be as a song resound. And may your life be to sing awake the light, then softly serenade the stars, ever dancing circles in the night. 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 Forgive our sophistication. Sounds bitten short and interesting when our actions fall so short of our ideals. Let's make a pact. Surrender one attachment. Lose one element of immediate gratification. On the road to healing, harmony, and balance. We may not be ready, but we are studying. We are learning, we are practicing. And when we return, our words will be stronger. Let's go in peace. Though our time together comes to a close, the service begins. May we extinguish this chalice, but not the fire of our light energy, of our life energy. <laughs> Join us for coffee hour in UU communion. Jim. I think we have time for a couple of announcements. First of all, I want to say thank you to the 16 people online this morning who joined us. You're always welcome. Next. So join us for coffee hour and analysis. Oh, oh wait, excuse me. We have announcements. Okay, the most important part of our service. Good morning. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, the weather gods are with us today. No rain. Woo! Um, today's the annual crop walk, and registration begins at 1 o'clock at 346 Shoesbury Street in Holden. Um, teams that are walking, let's meet outside after the registration about 1.30 for group picture. And uh, thank you, Betty, for taking pictures. Thanks again for all the generous support for this worthy cause and um, for donating, walking, baking. We got a great bake sale out there at coffee hour. And um, thank you all so very, very much. Much appreciated. Are there other announcements to be shared? Join us for coffee hour.